This 10 minute daily drawing exercise is a scene in Bern in Switzerland. And if you look in the background, you can maybe just make out a glimpse of the Swiss Alps just above the roof line. But in many ways, I was a little surprised that this was a bit more challenging than I expected to get it into the 10 minutes. I did get pretty much the buildings all done, certainly the church and the background building. And well, that was probably about it in the 10 minutes. But I'll, I'll tell you when we switched to double time for a couple of minutes where I just did some of the foreground elements and that tree in double time. But most of the architecture is in the 10 minutes, but I did have to keep the pace up. It might look slow enough now, and of course this is real time, but it felt a lot quicker at the time. And of course trying to do things such as ellipses for clocks that have a cornice that of course has to be drawn sort of asymmetrically and with different views on each side and then you've got two of them side by side that are approximately symmetrical but in different directions where seeing the left hand side of this tower clock tower more front on than the right hand side and that does mean the ellipses are a bit different the left hand one is a rounder ellipse than the right hand one so trying to do those and there is overhang over the side of the clock tower with it I managed to put the time on the second one started at a different time so we end up having three hands there as I'm looking at the clock now the very top of the spire is the sort of thing that probably I should have invested another 30 seconds in just in positioning marks before I started because it is a very tall thin element and I don't think I quite got that right that section it's it's just a bit large a bit high and a bit wide I think and then we had the smaller base for the spire and this is where we really want to make sure we nail that center line down the whole spire and tower. And I, I don't think I quite did that. But you will notice that I start spires by putting a positioning mark, which I then check to see whether I think it's going to work. Now I took that left hand line out too far to the left and so it's made the tower look more lopsided the the actual spire on top I mean look more lopsided than it should have so this is where now I am very much feeling the pressure I'm trying not to look at the tower and think oh it's a bit a bit too big uh, because I do draw the rest of this pretty much actual size so the tower is sitting a little too large I think what I'm hoping is that when I go to draw this sort of scene now without this 10 minute time limit that just you know, takes some extra time will let me be so much more accurate in my observation. I'm using a 0 0.1 millimeter fine liner black Copic pen if you're interested in that and I draw on 210 GSM drawing cartridge. I use an Australian brand of paper called Art Tech which is actually an imported German paper, which they make into drawing pads in their factory in Victoria. And I just find it's a great paper for, for ink work and also for obviously the sketch markers. The, paper, the ink will often, using the sketch markers for value, the ink will bleed through to the other side but it doesn't seem to ever bleed through to the sheet of paper underneath. So I'm not sure how they make it work that way, but it does, I think, make it a good possibility. And it is also just got a little bit of, a, of an unsmooth surface. There's a bit of a dimple going back and forth, which I think makes it really nice with graphite 
or charcoal as well. It's just a little bit too smooth though for watercolour. The pigments tend to uh, float around within the wash. They don't quite have enough to catch them, to anchor them more evenly over the wet area. So I've tried to kind of come down relatively quickly, but as accurately as I can with the roof line and now this side. What I do with these three windows, you can see me, I align the first one and the last one and then I position the center one. I find this often works well for, for centering whatever number of architectural elements I need, whether it's columns or windows, anything that's repeated at equal distances along a wall, I find always work out how many you have to put where the center one might be. There are only three, so that wasn't so hard. But if there were seven, and particularly if there was foreshortening, if we weren't looking straight on at the wall, I would work out now where is the center one going to be? And some, and I'd often place the two end ones and then the center one, and then position the two on each side or one on each side of that, however many there are. I find that works very well for me. So now I've got this building in the background. I would have liked to have drawn this with a lighter touch, the building in the back. Uh, I'm just positioning that tree just so I don't draw through that space. But I must admit, when I started doing the windows, because I did want to blacken them, just very quickly and very gesturally, I found that it was just coming across blacker than I wanted so that I feel like it didn't quite have enough distance separation. It's just occurred to me now, thinking about it and watching me draw it, that the other thing I could have done, since it was too late obviously to try and draw these windows lighter, was I could have put a little more line work into the windows on the side of the church and in the tower just to darken them a little bit more and that would have had the same effect of making these further back windows look lighter because remember as I often keep saying we judge the value of um, of lights and darks against other values that we have so I couldn't make those lighter but if I made the other ones darker it would have had the same effect. Now I'm trying to keep these windows looking fairly aligned and symmetrical but it is tricky in the time that I have and then there's now just a fairly complex roof that I must admit it was a little bit hard in the lighting that I had and the time of night that it is for me to really work out exactly where all the lines were in the original. So I would possibly suggest that you, you might want to allow a few extra minutes for this one and just spend a bit of time working out exactly how this roof works. I find sometimes these little dormer windows in the Swiss roof lines um, it can be quite tricky to have not look as if they're tilted in all sorts of directions. You'll notice I change the roof line. I, I've got, there's something that wasn't quite working correctly with this and I couldn't really work out what it was in the time I have. So I've turned the corner here and now at this building that just comes in a little the corner of it on the left and I want to continue the roof line of the subsequent buildings just trying to work out what's happening again it wasn't that easy in the conditions I was working within but equally I'm trying to embrace the idea of developing a, a lighter more gestural style that that simplifies things a little bit and learns to live with a slightly more looseness in the way things are drawn and put together than than many of the drawings I've done where I've taken as much time as I've wanted to I do think it is a tremendous benefit 
to do these 10 minute drawings and they usually leave me wanting to do more, wanting to draw more, which is fine for me because I usually get to if I particularly want to. But as a daily drawing exercise, whether you take 10 minutes or 20 minutes doesn't really matter. It's the regularity that matters. So we've now switched to double time and I'm just completing a few more details here that we can have in the lower section. I had thought of finishing around now, but I thought, no, I'll add some more details down here. So it looks a little bit more like an unfinished, uh, like a finished um, scene. This was actually my first view of the Swiss Alps once we arrived in Bern, and I was just amazed at how massive they looked. And the next day we drove out to um, through Interlaken and uh, and found a spot of snow that we could play around in, even though it was the middle of summer, which is unusual for an Australian to think of snow anywhere in the middle of summer. So I'm not exactly sure what these five big pipes are. I assume they're some sort of fairly modernistic chimney setup. And again, I wasn't going to include them, but there was a bit of a big gap there and I couldn't tell what was there if we left them out. So I thought I'll put them in and that's it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you enjoyed this quick visit to the city of Bern in Switzerland, a magnificent old, in many ways, medieval, it seemed to me, city. Wonderful preservation of the old town. So why not give this a go? You'll find this photo on my channel community page and you can either print off a copy or just use it from the screen. But look, whatever you use and however you use it, whatever you draw, whatever time it takes, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next video. Bye.